راسي واعبد ربك حتى ينتهي رغم رمضان الله ديد ناسي ويشب يلود انت رمضان انت با الله سيز واعبد ربك حتى يأتيك اليقين worship your Lord until that moment you face death until that moment you face death not until the month of Ramadan ends not when the day of Eid begins not when you are just happy Allah Azza wa Jal commands Muhammad and he commands you that you worship him until you die because your life is for Allah and every day that you live you live it for Allah and every moment you live you live it for Allah and every second you live you live it for Allah so you live for Allah until you meet Allah so you worship Allah until you die not when the month of Ramadan ends that verse does not exist The Ramadan worshippers. They think that Allah Ta'ala exists only in the month of Ramadan. The Almighty Lord, who is the Lord of the month of Ramadan, is also the Lord of the remaining months. This was only but a training for them to successfully pass the test that Allah will examine them with after Ramadan. And as the predecessor said, how wretched are a people who do not know Allah Ta'ala only in Ramadan, how evil they are. They are the Ramadan worshippers. And what we got to understand is that one of the signs of the acceptance of Ramadan is that Ramadan is followed up with what? With good deeds. With good deeds, not bad deeds, with good deeds. Because if you follow it up with bad deeds, you take that garment of worship off, you have not benefited. You have lost. So one of the signs of the acceptance of Ramadan is that garment remains on. The Salaf used to spend six months making dua that they reach Ramadan and six months after that asking Allah that the Ramadan be accepted. You worked hard in Ramadan, but we as Muslims, we're not all about Ramadan. It's Ramadan and after Ramadan. Imam Ahmed, when they asked him, when do we rest? He said, when you put your first foot in heaven, then you can rest. One of the signs of an accepted Ramadan is that our life changes even if it were to mean, or even if it was to mean just by a few inches. But the life has changed. If my life changes after Ramadan, it means my Ramadan was correct. If my life becomes better after Ramadan, it means my Ramadan was correct. But if my life goes back to where it was before Ramadan, then I wasted my Ramadan. There are those who choose to continue living on the same path that we're living in the month of Ramadan. And there are those who choose to turn their backs on Allah Azza wa Jal after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved them and take another path or go back to the path they were on before the month of Ramadan. And I say, I say to that brother or that sister that lived throughout the month of Ramadan, after you've experienced what you've experienced from this love from Allah Azza wa Jal and the rahmah and the mercy of Allah and the forgiveness of Allah, how dare you turn your back on all this? The month of Ramadan is not about what you only do in the month of Ramadan. It's about who you are after the month of Ramadan. So the month of Ramadan had ended. So look at yourself right now after the month of Ramadan. Don't destroy that mountain of deeds you accumulated and let it go and vanish. Would you throw away that hard work? What do you think about someone, listen to this, who works or wins millions and sits, takes his millions dollar by dollar and rips them or burns them? What do you think about an engineer who builds a high rise, uh, everyone loves it, says it's the best, 
and then goes to the high rise and tears it down brick by brick. What do you think about that person? What do you think about someone who takes his lifelong savings, he works so hard for, and throws it in the trash? What do you think about that person? That's the example Allah gave us in Surah Al-Nahal. وَلَا تَكُونُ كَلَّتِي نَقَدَتْ غَزْلَهَا مِنْ بَعْدِ قُوَّةٍ أَنْكَافَةٍ Don't be like her who undoes the thread which she has spun after has become strong. What does that verse mean? Abdullah ibn Kathir al-Suddi, Mujahid, Qutada, Ibn Zayd, and others said the true meaning of this verse in Surah Al-Nahal is that there was a crazy woman in Mecca. Every time she yarns, she knits, she gets to the end and then pulls the strings apart. After she's done, she pulls the strings apart. She makes a nice blanket. She makes a nice garment. And right when she gets, everyone says that's beautiful, astonishing, she was very good at it. When she gets to the end, she takes it apart. You know how the brothers were wearing, wearing kufis here? Uh, if you don't tie the end of that kufi when it's knitted, it becomes, takes apart. This is the example Allah is trying to give you. Don't destroy your deeds. You worked so hard for a month. You left your desires. You could only live for the sake of Allah. You got a great balance in your account now. After all that you, were, you did, don't ruin it. Don't be like that crazy woman in Mecca who used to knit and take it apart. Don't be like that crazy engineer who's tearing his high rise down stone by stone. Don't be like that millionaire who burned his cash. You got your deeds, preserve them. Why do you stop praying? After the month of Ramadan, when you were praying in the month of Ramadan, why? What harm is the prayer bringing to you? Beside all the benefits and the blessings and the happiness and the contentment and satisfaction that Allah Azza wa Jal puts in your heart. So why do you stop it for? Why do you stop attending the mosque? When every time you attend the mosque, you felt so happy. You felt so content. You felt so peaceful. More peaceful than your own house and your own room in your own house. So why is it now that you want to stop it and end it? You had beautiful moments reading the Quran Kareem. By the time you close the Quran Kareem in the month of Ramadan, you look forward to that moment again to open the Quran Kareem. You became so attached to the book of Allah. You became so attached and connected to the book of Allah. So why is it that last time you've closed it in the month of Ramadan, you would not open it to the next Ramadan? Why? It's the book of Allah. It's the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. All this sacrifice and struggle that you've worshipped Allah in the month of Ramadan until you became so close to Allah that Allah Azza wa Jal is about to make you from amongst those that He accepts you and here you are on the gate of the paradise away from the hellfire and then it's that moment that you take one more one more step into the paradise you turn your back and say you know what I'll wait till next year Ramadan why? why do you put yourself in that position? you went through 30 days a beautiful days being so close to Allah you managed to rehabilitate yourself away from the haram and get rid of the haram in your life until you became so close to Allah and then what you turn your back and say you know what I'll leave it for next year it sounds stupid doesn't it when Omar read it he said Taqamu, remain firm. He read the verse. He said, on the path of Allah, not slither and wriggle like a snake, going left and right one time religious, one time not, one time on his iman. In Ramadan, looking like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and outside Ramadan, looking like the enemies of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In Ramadan, salah, and outside Ramadan, no salah. In Ramadan, hijab, and outside Ramadan, no hijab. This is what he meant. In Ramadan, no music, and outside Ramadan, music. Those who only do good in Ramadan while the shaitan is shackled to those we say to them, they are the Ramadanis. 
The same thing Abu Bakr told the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam applies to them when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam died. Oh you who believe, whoever worships Ramadan, Ramadan has went away and died. Whoever worships Allah, Allah never dies. Yes, Ramadan is significant, but we don't stop at Ramadan. There are Rabbaniyun who worship Allah all the time, and there are Ramadaniyun who worship Allah Ramadan. The day we see the Eid or the moon of the Eid, we go back to exactly where we were prior to Ramadan. What was the point, my brothers and sisters? This is why I promise Allah that this Eid, we will not engage in that which will earn the wrath of Allah or make him displeased with us. We have never been taught to declare our happiness by doing that which will displease Allah. We have meetings with the opposite sex on the day of Eid to go back and do whatever we did not do in the month of Ramadan in terms of sin. Is that what Eid is all about? Eid is a day when we are conscious of Allah. We thank him for having given us a beautiful season and having come out with the forgiveness. This is why my brothers and sisters, are you aware of the fact that the eve of the Eid, once the moon is sighted, it is known as Laylatul Ja'iza. It is known as the eve of prize giving. And this is why in one narration, the Prophet ﷺ says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls out to his angels on that eve and he asks them, what do you think the reward of a slave who has fulfilled his job is? They will say, Oh, our Lord, it is to be given what he was promised. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, All my worshippers who have fasted for me, who have prayed for me, O oh, my angels, I let you bear witness that I have forgiven them completely. It is the night of forgiveness when the prizes are given. You know, a child who has been to the school through the year and worked very hard is a child that deserves the prize. And there will be a night where that prize is actually given to the child, making the child feel happy. What about the prize dished out by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And that is forgiveness and freedom from Jahannam. If I were to die now, I have no hope but in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah have mercy on myself and yourselves. I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us from amongst those who have steadfastness in their life. And I ask Allah Azza wa Jal, the changer of the hearts to change our hearts towards Him. And I ask Allah Azza wa Jal, to make us from amongst those who constantly obey him. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from amongst those who never forget him. And I ask Allah azza wa jal to make us from amongst those that he will protect in this dunya and the hereafter. Amen.